So far, we have seen many architectures in this series of autoencoders and they are working about how they take input, compresses it and then use that high level information to reconstruct the input again as an output. This is a common process with those architectures, inputs are processed sequentially. The case with deep convolutional autoencoder is the initial layer of neural network extracts low level features and as it passes through deeper layers, the network extracts high level features. Then we use those high level features with the decoder to start reconstructing or estimating the low level features. So what if we share both high level as well as low level information or features with the decoder so that it can have more diverse information to generate more accurate results. Well that's the basic architecture of unit model. This is called unit because it's U shaped architecture. It has to have same amount of layers in both encoder and decoder so that the decoder can use high level information from its previous layer and low level information from corresponding layer of encoder to compute the output for that particular decoder's layer. And this will happen for every layer in the decoder. So this is the basic idea behind unit architecture which is a state of the art model when it comes to semantic segmentation. So let's start building it from scratch and see how it's done. First, download the human body segmentation dataset from Kaggle. Link for this dataset is in the description. Once it get downloaded, extract it to your working directory. The dataset directory contains three subdirectories. One contains collage of images having full image, segmented person and cropped person from scene. Then the images directory contains original image and the mask directory contains masked person for that particular image. Both image and their corresponding mask is having same file name. So we have enough information about the dataset. So let's fire up the Jupyter notebook and start writing code. After importing some basic libraries, enable TensorFlow memory growth so that it won't consume whole GPU memory at the time of initialization. Get the dataset images and mask path and use listir function to get the file name for the images directory. Reason why we are taking only images file names is the corresponding mask for each image is having the same file name as the source image. Now write a function which takes image and mask path to load and preprocess. Read the file, decode it as png. PNG because the mask file is having transparent background. Assign the data type. Resize the image to 224 by 224. Normalize them and return. You can test the function by passing path to image and mask. And it is loaded now. You can visualize it as well. Just create two subplots and plot image and mask in subplot. Now we are ready with the pre-processing part. It's time to build the model from scratch. So before doing that in code, let's understand how we are going to build it using animation. The encoder will be made using deep convolutional layer where C is denoting convolution layers and P is denoting pooling layer whereas in decoder U is denoting upsampling layer. And the connection between these layers can will be done by concatenating this convolutional layer with upsampling layer. We'll do the same in code. Start with the input layer having same shape as the input shape, then start stacking multiple convolutional layer and a pooling layer. For decoder's part, replace the pooling layer with the upsampling layer, then use concatenate layer to connect the corresponding encoder's layer, then perform convolution. Do the same for every layer in the decoder until you get to the output layer. Once it's done, 
create a model instance for above stack layer and compile it with the adaptive momentum optimizer, binary cross entropy loss function and then you can use summary to get the model information. And with this the model part is completed. Now create dataset pipeline for loading and pre-processing data at the time of training. First get the path for both images and masks and split the dataset for training and test set. Now use TensorFlow dataset to create dataset pipeline and map the input with the pre-processing function we made. Shuffle and decide the batch size to be loaded. Remember the batch size depends on how much GPU memory you have and do the same for test set as well. Now define loss function and optimizer. Write a function to perform training step. First get the model's prediction on input coming from function argument and calculate loss with respect to original output. Once you get the loss, just compute gradient using gradient tape and apply gradient descent optimizer to update the weights. Now you have to perform training step for every batch in the training dataset. So for each epoch, create an empty list to store losses for every batch. And for each batch in the training dataset, perform training step to update model weights and append the loss for the batch in the list. And before the end of every epoch, calculate the loss on test dataset to validate the model on unseen data. Now print training and validation score at the end of epoch. And now you can execute the cell to start training. And the training is started as you can see how it's eating my GPU. It will take time so I'm skipping it. Once training gets finished, get a sample from test dataset and feed it into unit model. Now you can plot the predicted output and real output. And see the results are so close. You can use model.save function to save the model for future use. And this is how you can make unit model and train it on any dataset from scratch. So here are three things you can remember from this video. Unit is one of the state of the model for performing semantic segmentation. Decoder in unit model uses high level information from its previous layer and low level information directly from encoders layer to perform upsampling. UNET is good at image to image translation, biomedical image segmentation, learning, dense volumetric segmentation, pixel wise regression and so on. You can use UNET in GAN to generate more good quality outputs. But that's the story for another video. Thanks for watching.